members. This is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com. It's October 5th, 2021. The whistleblower Facebook down and the January 6th insurrection. There are a lot of conspiracy theories floating around the internet. I've dug pretty deeply into this and I want to give you my takeaway on this subject. Um, of course, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you can support my channel, please do so. But regardless, there's a lot of shenanigans going on and a lot of false reporting. And I really wanted to dig deeply into this topic because as many of you know, uh, yesterday, Facebook was down for several hours and this uh, followed a 60 minutes report um, by a whistleblower um, from internal documents at Facebook and something else happened on Sunday that most people don't know about and that's the Pandora Papers. Biggest ever leak of offshore data exposes financial secrets of the rich and powerful. So we have this massive da data leak from bankers and lawyers showing where all of these rich and powerful people are putting their money offshores. Um, we then had uh, the five major allegations from whistleblower Francis Hogan, Hogan uh, leveled against Facebook. And they simply were stuff we already knew misleading the public misleading investors harmful to teens like you know girls harming themselves over instagram affecting global societies all of this well documented um contributing to political polarization that led to capital riots now that one just sticks out like a sore thumb um you know for it to be one of the highlights of the takeaways of this um she told 60 Minutes that dissolving of her civic integrity team and turning off misinformation safety systems contributed to the U.S. Capitol riot in January. She called those actions a betrayal of democracy. Um, interestingly enough, uh, you know, this lady, you know, is really not saying anything we didn't already know. The, the importance of all this, of course, is that she is currently testifying today like right now um in front of congress in, in a senate panel about what to do about facebook the problem is you know we've known almost all of this for quite some time if you didn't watch the social dilemma on uh netflix i highly suggest you do you it'll it'll guaranteed you will not allow your children on social media. I don't allow my children on social media. They probably never will be. Um, I use social media for a very specific reason. That's to share out my videos. I use it for what I intended to be used. But if you, if you don't know by now, you should expect no privacy on any social media outlet, especially Facebook. If you have a reasonable expectation that your data will be kept private by Facebook, then you have clearly not listened for the last, you know, half a decade. Um, Project Veritas, James O'Keefe, dumped massive amounts of, you know, internal documents from numerous whistleblowers. Where was the media then? Crickets. Uh, but suddenly... 60 Minutes interviews this at Lady, and it's national news, and two days later, she's in front of the Senate. I find this, um, let's just say, I find this very propaganda-styled setup, and it stinks to high habit. Um, Veritas, Project Veritas Crickets, this lady, front row seat, uh, 60 Minutes special. So that tells me something that there's more to this story than, you know, what's being told. Back to the story. So for those who are wondering, you know, some people were saying, well, this was likely, you know, a hack. And there was even, you know, a group online, uh, on, I believe it was a riot forums, um, 
selling you know this data set that was supposedly stolen from facebook but it turns out it was like two weeks old and it was publicly scraped information boring stuff boring stuff all fake um and you know of course everybody on twitter you know who understands the internet understands hacking and all these sorts of things they were just you know uh looks like large sections of the routing were just deleted i mean it's gone um you know and then talking about bgp um for those who don't know what bgp is and how routing on the internet how this interconnected world stays afloat it's really a spaghetti mess um it's pretty disgusting in fact if you really want to understand the background of how facebook went down and why at least why they're publicly claiming it went down um Krebs on security has probably the best article on this and you know that basically uh they're saying that someone at facebook caused an update to be made to the company's border gateway protocol records um and that caused the outage now we won't get too into the weeds into this because i'm sure i would just bore you to tears um all my inf hashtag infosec uh warriors out there you know what i'm talking about uh, but just a quick pre primer on all that, um, you know, Facebook returns to network or a crisis of one of the most famous social media. This is absolutely hilarious for you insiders. Um, Cloudflare, under, understanding how Facebook disappeared from the Internet. Again, talking about BGP, um, you know, many you know people talking about it's not just a DNS issue. It's a BGP problem border uh gate border gateway protocol but this guy you know throws in hashtag cyber polygon and cyber polygon was this idea that what if there was a ripple effect or a cyber pandemic something that affected the entire internet um which in fact this outage did do um as a result of uh you know <laughs> the the bgp problem um we actually had uh, major carriers like Verizon, uh, Vodafone, uh, you know, large, you know, communications companies unable to work because there were so many computers out there and servers that were basically flooding the Internet with requests for where is Facebook? They whenever you type Facebook.com into your browser, you do a DNS lookup, it's a domain name services lookup, and it looks for the phone number of the, the IP address of the computers at Facebook, and then it returns it back to you and says it's here, and then you get the web page on your screen um, or updates your app. Now, when that black hole occurs and nothing's being returned, the computer's too stupid to stop asking. It just keeps asking, and, and this buildup of requests slowly was taking down the entire internet now of course twitter being the last man standing you know there was a rush to twitter so <laughs> people were having a field day on twitter because with facebook down facebook also owns instagram and whatsapp um you know it was it was a huge cluster f if you know what i'm saying um but regardless if you want to get a, a good uh primer on b what bgp is and you want some hilarity with it uh watch the video you down with bgp it's uh to the tune of naughty by nature's you down with opp other people's packets we'll just say um pretty funny stuff um but if you're looking for a precedent for yesterday's facebook out outage please look up the as 7007 incident to learn the origin story of a bgp error eating the internet and it's a pretty funny story. Um, I actually had to dig it up from archive.org because, you know, th this is, doesn't even exist on the internet anymore. But Murphy's Law Strikes Again, AS7007. All of these links will be in, pinned in the comments below um, so that you can, you know, follow along, do your homework. But two hackers a long time ago, as early as 2006, were screaming bloody murder about how BGP could be um, used to basically intercept all of the traffic going to and from a you know in of a company like Facebook. So literally right now, um, 
the NSA, the CIA, foreign governments, um, or nefarious hacker groups could be exploiting BGP to literally take every bit of data coming to and from Facebook and recording it and Facebook never even know about it. So this is a much bigger problem than you know just Facebook going down yesterday, but it still begs the question, why in the middle of we have a whistleblower come out now there have been many whistleblowers before with project veritas but we have a 60 minutes whistleblower who's got a front row seat in senate and the minute she her interview drops right after the Pand pandora papers are dropped um her video her interview drops and then hashtag delete facebook starts running rampant all over the internet now Facebook immediately goes down. So it begs the question, is Facebook, you know, doing what's called loss prevention? Did they take themselves down while the bleeding was occurring to stop people from deleting their accounts? Did they take themselves down to do scrubbing? Because obviously today, there's going to be a Senate hearing and they want to go ahead and clean house. Um, back to the Krebs article, it was even reported that, you know, individuals inside Facebook were not even able to access some of the buildings. Um, the New York Times tweeted that Facebook employees told her that they were having trouble accessing Facebook buildings because the employee badges no longer worked. And you can see that right here. It's in the Krebs article that uh, their their Facebook badges no longer worked. And um, Facebook engineer, that's why it persisted so long. Facebook engineers may have trouble physically accessing computer servers needed to upload new BGP records to the global internet. Now, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, so are, you know, somebody obviously had to get in there and be able to update these records in order to get Facebook back online. Even for a brief moment, uh, the Facebook.com was being auctioned online because it wasn't owned by anybody briefly. Now that that's kind of funny, but it's not a reality, um, but it did happen. The question remains, during this outage, were they, was this an intentional outage brought on by Facebook? Was this just some, you know, because you'd have to be a pretty high level techie to be able to update some BGP records um, to screw up the entire Facebook network, both externally on the internet and internally where, um, you know, the Facebook employee system so what they call Facebook workspace, where, you know, allegedly uh, this whistleblower downloaded reams of data from, um, that none of the Facebook employees were able to access Facebook workspace. Um, the internal, you know, mechanisms for even the door locks were all down because apparently they use BGP on the external and internal, ethernet, intranet. Um, you know, it's it, it, it's 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 a fascinating story when you really think about it from an information security aspect, but it's also kind of creepy because you have to ask yourself what the hell was actually going on, and will we ever get the truth? Throw all that out the window, because you really just have to look at the propaganda aspects of what's going on right now, and I think that that's really the 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 underlying story that needs to be told and understood from all this is that you could dig into all of this information for quite some time and you know try to understand all of the security flaws of bgp you know how the dns servers came back up finally oh facebook's back problem solved you know um of course there's a hearing going on but you know we'll deal with that in the future um but but, but i want to focus mainly on this whole that you know the takeaway as they put it um that you know contributing to the political polarization that led to the capital riots that facebook simply just did not do enough um to stop the capital city riots the insurrection um 
Now this is this is where the BS hits the fan for me. Um, they're trying to justify more censorship on Facebook because Facebook didn't do enough to stop the seven deaths that occurred as a result of the Capital City riots, the January 6th insurrection. Choose your hashtag. The problem with that is that the FBI had Proud Boy informants before and during the entire debacles going on reporting live via you know phone calls, texts, Hey, we're going inside now. Oh, there's a shot fired at the front door. I'm diving out the window. Um, not only did the FBI know in advance, the Capital City Police knew in advance. So this really begs the question, you know, um, if everybody knew, everybody being the FBI, the Capital City Police, why was nothing done? So... The whistleblower's argument is that Facebook should have done more and censored all of these people sharing maps of the you know capital city complex, um, sharing you know information on planning and coordinating an attack on the capital. But if that were true, then it would be less likely that the capital city police and the FBI would have ever known about it. These individuals would have moved to more secured uh, places to discuss this sort of thing. And the fact that they were openly discussing it um, on Facebook is pretty telling in and of itself. So the takeaway I get from this is that the FBI knew in advance, the FBI knew what was going on live via reporting from their own confidential informant from the white extremist, you know, greatest threat facing America right now, according to many of the mainstream media narratives. And at the same time, the Capital City Police also knew this, but their upper echelons weren't informed, as so the story goes. Regardless, this is one of two things. This is either a massive intelligence failure to protect the capital or this is an intentional false flag let me know in the comments what you think do you think that this was just complete incompetence um they didn't really know what to do they didn't expect it to escalate like it did um or was it just a big, you know, reason to, you know, censure Donald Trump to make sure he could never be elected again to paint white supremacist extremists as the greatest threat facing our nation? In other words, a false flag event. Let me know in the comments what you think is really going on here. Because I have my suspicions, um, and none of us will ever really know the truth. But history does dictate, you know, the future and the present. Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. So I want to leave you with some final thoughts on this. I have this playlist get that I created on YouTube called Hack the Vote. And this was about the Hillary Clinton-Donald Trump election. And this was also some Project Veritas videos. And the series was called Rigging the Election. And during it, what we learned was that Scott Vo Fovel and uh, Robert Creamer were basically paid to go to Trump rallies, get people to start fights, what they called bird dogging, and then make sure the mainstream media was there to capture it on tape. Agent provocateurs. Paid political actors who were sent to provoke violence where there was none planned. And I suggest everybody watch these videos. Because it is hella informative 
to what's going on today. Um, this one's rigging the election video. Clinton campaign and DNC incite violence at Trump rallies. Rigging the election video too. Mass voter fraud. Um, Cesar Vargas, we have mentally ill people that we pay to do shit, make no mistake. And if you think that Antifa and BLM weren't at the January 6th insurrection, you are sadly mistaken and ill-informed. You do not know the full picture. And I could go on ad nauseum and make this video two hours long, show you all the proof and all the videos of that. I think that you guys are smart enough to go and do that yourself. But watch this because it's very informative about how dirty politics and making a false flag, a making propaganda for the mainstream media to feed off of how it works um and then rigging the election video three creamer confirms hillary clinton was personally involved in the end it was the candidate hillary clinton the future president of the united states who wanted ducks on the ground so by god we will get ducks on the ground now robert creamer was also seen in uh barack obama's office uh 30 or 40 times, and he visited the White House over 100 times. Um, he was promptly fired after all of these videos were released. But regardless, that doesn't change much. Um, what it does cement for me is that regardless of what you may think about Facebook censorship or should you have privacy on Facebook, should you even be on Facebook? Um, I don't have an opinion on that. That's up to you. Everybody has to make their own decisions. Um, but what I want you to understand more than anything is that you have to be able to discern fact from fiction to be able to tell when you're being lied to. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you get educated on the subject. I created a page on that. It's climateviewer.com slash propaganda. And it's about how people can manipulate you with their words, how they use fear, uncertainty, and doubt to control the masses. Um, and once you understand political slave speak or language that is used to establish and maintain the master-slave relationship, you become very aware of how those who don't understand slave speak can be dominated, subjugated, and controlled by words essentially enslaved by words. Correspondingly, you become impervious to external control through words. In other words, you enjoy more freedom. You have more options available to you. It's hard to fight an enemy who has outposts in your head. Ideas are more powerful than guns. We would not let our enemies have guns. Why should we let them have ideas? Joseph Stalin. And language creates spooks that get into our heads and hypnotize us. I, see, I really hope that it, all of you will take the time to read The Anatomy of Slave Speak. It changed my life. It made me more cautious of being, um, you know, duped into these, you know, conspiracies. Um, being able to see, you know, the propaganda on TV for what it actually is. Um you know, that they're creating these narrative networks, that they have a goal, and you're never going to really know what the goal is, but you should be a good bullshit detector. And I maintain that the real takeaway from this should be that the whole idea that um, Facebook, you know, is you know, not a publisher, they're a platform, that these social media giants that have so many, let's be positive, that have the potential to have so many good, you know, effects on this world, also have so many negative effects on this world, but that they do censor content regularly, that they do moderate the flow of information on a daily basis, they sell your personal data, um, they do thought experiments on you, Again, if you have not seen it, please, please watch The Social Dilemma. 
while you still can. It is freaking amazing. Um, that Facebook has only been allowed to become so large because people willingly use it. And a hammer can build a house or it can break a skull. And Facebook is just another tool. And you can use it to share pictures with your family who live in other states or countries. And, you know, to you, that is a good thing. Or you can use it to, as the Wall Street Journal or is reporting, um, that, you know, their algorithms are allowing drug cartels and human traffickers to use its services openly, um, that Instagram's effects on teenage girls' mental health, um, you know, that all the bad things um, also are true. So you got to take you got to take all of this in and say, what's the real takeaway from this whistleblower, Facebook going down and the Senate hearing in the January 6th insurrection? My takeaway is pretty simple. That because all of these public these posts were public because people were allowed to speak freely the FBI and Capitol Police knew everything in advance they did nothing with it and then the narrative was spun that this was all a planned insurrection by white nationalist racist homophobic xenophobic insert your ists um but at the, at, the end, at the end of the day, is it Facebook's fault or is it the FBI and Capital City Police's fault for not acting on the information that was clearly available to them? Um, what is the limit of free speech? Should Facebook and other social media outlets have free speech? Um, you know, I don't think that they should be allowed to have human trafficking sold openly on Facebook, but at the same time, they should not be able to censor politicians for or people having political views. So, or having views on vaccines or any, you know, just about any topic. So there's got to be some happy median here. Let me know what you think that is in the comments. But my takeaway is this. The narrative that's being painted right now is that Facebook did not do enough censorship of mostly conservatives who enacted violence at the capital city and therefore there should be more censorship. So if you believe that to be true, then you're taking the word of this lady over the word of the hundreds of whistleblowers who've come before before her on Project Veritas um, from the facts that remain that the FBI and the Capital City Police knew all of this and did nothing, did not act on it. Um, this was a pretty hate machine um, turned into a TV drama to create fear, uncertainty, and doubt and further polarize our nation I firmly stand on that and um, I, I will always contend that Facebook and other social media sites like it are just that they are the pretty hate machine looks real nice can be used for a lot of evil regardless they should not enjoy the you know freedoms that they have from liability under the FCC rules, I believe it's section 203, that should be a thing of the past because at this point, they are no longer an independent platform. This solidifies beyond a shadow of a doubt in the public narrative from 60 Minutes, not Project Veritas, um, that Facebook clearly has a bias that clearly does experiment on its individual users and is censoring content on the regular. If that is the case, they should be liable for getting it wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments because, you know, information is important.
And with information comes power. And with power comes great responsibility. So please take the information that I've provided you today to attack ideas, not people.